six things I dislike about my XR5 Turbo. Uh, I had a few friends and they're like, oh, should you really make a dislike video? And it's not really a dislike video to the car per se, it's just things that I find a little bit sort of frustrating or annoying with not really my car in specifics, but just it seems like a lot of people have these issues with these cars. So I'll just, it's in no particular order. I've got them sort of like listed on my phone so I can kind of go through them one by one. Um, but I also wanted to apologize for not having a video last week. I um, was just caught up. I had a long week, as some of you may have seen. I had someone throw coffee at the car and it went everywhere, which was quite annoying. Um, and then, yeah, it's just crap weather as well. Just balls in my favor. Even tomorrow, it's probably going to rain again. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd get the video done today since it's somewhat sunny and it's not too bad for wind. So, um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Joy, can't even speak properly. Um, but yeah, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and let's get to it. All right, so in, again, no particular order, I've got first uh, sort of on a list. Um, it's just general reliability. Um, in terms of reliability, I mean more so from just a looking after the car perspective, um, especially if you buy one of these cars secondhand. Um, you know, regular maintenance is a big thing. Um, especially with oil changes, um, just general sort of fluid changes, even the gearbox oil on a lot of these cars, um, some of them haven't had that changed. Um, and coolant as well, um, like a whole flush of the system and stuff, so I feel like they're sort of issues or sort of things that, you know, need to be sort of checked over when looking at one of these cars or if you're potentially going to buy one. Um, yeah, luckily with mine, I can't say it's like necessarily a specific dislike, um, the oil change that had been done just before I got it was, I think, it, I hadn't used the wrong oil per se, but it wasn't really the right oil, um, to put it frankly. Um, so that was a bit annoying, but obviously I got it changed. I've got the right oil running through the car now, so I did an oil change myself um, with the correct parts and it's all good now. But yeah, it's just something to keep in mind if you look at buying one of these cars or have one, you know, you've got to keep up with the regular maintenance on them and look after them quite well. Um, if you treat the car well, the car will treat you well, basically. So, yeah, that's number one. So, number two is one that I can say has gotten a bit more uh, prominent since I've tuned the car, and that is fuel consumption. Um, yeah, in stock form, I wouldn't say the fuel in this car was too bad. You can run them if they're completely stock on 95, that's what's rated inside of the fuel cap. Most people just have it running on 98 anyway. But um, yeah, fuel consumption is a big one, um, especially if it's tuned like what this is now. It's on Dream Science Mod X, and I've noticed the jump in fuel. If you drive it normally or carefully, you should be fine, but it's, you know, it's very hard to not want to push a car like this, you know, even around town, like, you know, if there's a zone going from like 40k an hour to like 70, like, you're gonna wanna sort of like boot it to get up to speed and it's a bit hard not to, but then you notice that your fuel consumption just jumps. Um, so yeah, fuel consumption is definitely a big one. Oh, hey, Mark. Um, but yeah, I mean, it depends on if the cars are daily. Um, if the cars are daily, like what this is for me, um, I don't tend to notice it too much. I drive pretty sensibly. Um, you know, I, I try and average around the sort of, I can get it down to around the nines or eights if I'm careful, um, but you know, if it's a daily driver and you're in traffic all the time, I'd say fuel would be out the one that you kind of have to look out for because they're not a very fuel, like they're not very economic. They're not like a, a Holden Astro or whatnot, like a four cylinder where they're not going to be drinking a whole lot of fuel and averaging like sixes, um, especially in traffic, they start to gobble fuel. But then again, it's probably not what you really buy an XR5 or a five cylinder for is fuel economy. You're buying it for that sort of noise and thrill and sort of enjoyment. So yeah, that's number two is fuel consumption. All right, so coming in at number three, and this is again, it's not really in a specific order. It's just what I'd say um, is the cost to sort of modify an XR5 or a Focus ST if you're in Europe. Um, Compared to other cars, you know, they're probably not as bad. I mean, every car is obviously expensive for parts and things like that, but, you know, some things on these can get quite pricey, especially like secondhand parts if you're trying to sort of maintain or look after the car, or even some things like these tail lights for my car, for example, or um, headlights and stuff like that. So, 
you know, um, modification wise, uh, you know, again, that's a whole nother ball game. Like a clutch is pretty expensive. I think from memory, an RS clutch is around 1500 Australian dollars. You guys can always correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, you know, an exhaust, good one. You can get some good ones out of the UK. They're probably like a good thousand or more dollars in Australian dollars. Um, you know, if you get coilovers, all sorts of things like that. Um, an intake, again, is another big sort of jump. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of parts and a big factor of that is whether or not you can install them yourself or whether you'll need someone to install them for you. Um, with this car, I've done a lot of the stuff on it myself. I had a mate help me with my intake and pretty much every other sort of mechanical modification. The main one I didn't do myself was my exhaust system, purely because I don't have the space and I didn't know how to do it. Um, and I, yeah, I just couldn't sort of do it here at home. I just didn't have the right tools or anything like that. So I had to obviously get a shop to do it, but the labor cost wasn't too bad anyway. So it was worth it. But yeah, you have to bear that in mind like if you buy a car like this or any car really, but it's more specifically tailored to this. Um, the labor cost to install certain parts and do certain jobs is quite expensive. So you have to bear that in mind if you buy one or have one or you know, looking to modify one, you have to um, keep that in mind that it's gonna be quite costly. So that'll be number three. Now, number four, I'd say it affects most XR5s or Focus STs. I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I know of one that hasn't had it affected unless it's been like garaged and cut up its entire life. Um, but it's mainly the paint quality and sort of peel. I've got a few spots on the car, I think one or two on my, my bonnet and one on the roof. So it's not too bad, it's, you know, it's nearly 14 years old. I think I think it's doing pretty good for its age and wear. It's just clocked over 94,000 kilometers today as well, which is, you know, I'd say pretty low. Um, but yeah, paint quality, just I guess for being in the sun, especially for like Australian cars, you know, we, we get a whole lot of sun and a lot of UV for a decent, you know, amount of the year, especially where I am here since I'm on the Gold Coast, it's in the sun. I have it covered nine times out of 10, but you know, I like park it up at the gym or if I'm out and about, you know, it's sitting in the sun. So it's beating off the panels. So um, yeah, paint quality would definitely be number four is like a negative for these cars considering their age now. Now, number five is one that I haven't noticed as much since I've put a short shifter in the car but it's the sort of clunky gearbox. Um, if you have an XR5 or an ST, um, and you've, I don't even know if you'd have to have modified it, whatever, um, but it seems to be like a sort of common issue from what I've heard that they seem to make a bit of sort of like a clunk noise or like a, it's in between gear changes pretty much. Um, when I go from like second to third occasionally or third to fourth, you can kind of hear it. It's not really apparently anything to worry about. I remember when I first heard it, that's why I got the gearbox oil changed in the car, which quietened it down a fair bit. And then I also got a short shifter installed. But yeah, apparently it's just a, a thing that they do. Um, you know, it doesn't seem to make as much noise now, but when I first got it, it did. And apparently it's sort of a common issue on a lot of XR5s and STs. It's like a, I guess some sort of a dislike. Um, yeah, it, it's, to me it wasn't necessarily like, was mainly more of a sort of discomfort and like oh is something wrong with the gearbox or is something not going right so I'd go oh you know it'd, it'd make you start to worry pretty much so it'd make you go oh you know is something wrong with the car da -da 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 -da, when a lot of the times it's just how the gearbox is when you're shifting in between gears so yeah that would be number five all right so coming in at number six which is the final one for this video and that is the cup holders um if you have an XR5 or an ST Mark II, you will know that the cup holders in this car are practically useless. Um, yeah, they don't they don't hold much. Um, I had a water bottle here before, I think it's gone, um, that was quite small, it would probably fit, but yeah, they're just useless. Uh, they can't fit much, um, it's a bit of a design sort of issue. I know that here in Australia, I think there's a bloke who's made sort of like a 3D printed um, sort of setup that kind of can hold bigger cups and sort of sits them in there properly. It's like an insert um, To be honest, I don't drink a whole lot of sort of things when I'm in the car anyway I usually have bottles or cans of stuff and I usually just 
have them in the sort of door pocket sort of sat upright so they're not sort of rocking around um, but yeah if you've got an XR5 or an ST you'll know that the cup holders are just such a big big pain in the backside you can't have anything in there without it tipping over even a coffee cup for example um, it's just pointless uh, when I first got the car I had uh, I was at a car event and I had a coke a can of cokes like a normal size one like yay high um, had it in there I opened it I didn't drink all of it I drank about half um, and yeah as I was accelerating as I was leaving the meat it tipped went inside the um, seat belt thing and made it all sort of like sticky from obviously like the, the sugar and stuff it was like massive clean up and pain in the ass but it's just yeah they're not they're not very practical at all so I'd say it's a very non-practical feature of this car so um, yeah that's pretty much number six I appreciate you guys uh, watching the videos the most recent one which was the stage two tuning I think yeah it was when I loaded up the tune and got my dad to sort of have a few rips in the XR5 that got like 700 views which is crazy so um, I appreciate all the support as always as I said earlier in the video um, I apologize for not having a video um, last week I just had some issues with someone throwing coffee and then the weather being crap so it's like it wasn't really the week to do it you know what I mean there's times where you're just in the mood and other times where you're not so um, I'll be sure to have a few good videos in the next coming weeks to kind of keep you guys entertained so um yeah i appreciate you guys watching uh be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you in the next one